deeper for these next just a couple of 60 seconds I just want you to put on your mind the thing whether it's a job a career an idea ideal life or a relationship the thing that has gotten in the way of you just wanting him see a lot of times I had a, a, a encounter with the Lord a couple days ago and it wrecked me because a lot of times we make this just wanting him so complicated and the Lord revealed to me that I was living in like an almost anxiety, like decision making type thing to where like every decision, I'm like, Lord, is this what you want? Lord, is this what you want? Like, am I doing this right? Am I doing it? And he, he, what he said to me was like, Chandler, he said, if you just want me, everything else will be filtered through your desires for me. And I, I want to help, I want to help free some of you, especially you, you young people. We, we can live such a, a life almost of trying to, because we want to be righteous, because we want to live pure, because we want to be holy, we almost start trying to live in perfectionism. And so much anxiety and worry and stress and frustration can come with that because you're too busy trying to want things alongside him instead of just wanting him and filtering everything through him. In Psalms, he says, I will give you the desires of your heart. A lot of us look at that like, okay, he's going to give me what I want. No, he's going to give you what to want. He, he's not saying, yeah, if you want this, I'm just going to give it to you. No, he's saying, if you delight in me, I'm going to fix it so if you just want me, I'm going to tell your heart what to want. So you don't have to live in anxiety and worry about what, if, if, is this job right? Is this relationship right? Is, am, am I doing, am I at the right church? Am I, you put your focus on him. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He will lead you. So, so let's just, I just feel like the Lord just wants us to pause and take 60 seconds to, to put your mind on that thing that's in the way of you wanting him. The, the Bible says in, in the year, yeah, Chris, you can come on with the pad and stuff. He says in the year King Isaiah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord and he was high and lifted up and his train and his glory filled the temple. And he said, I saw the cherubims and the seraphims crying back and forth, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. But then Isaiah switched it up. He says, but then I saw me. And he says, then I said, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. And what it goes to show us, the principle is that when you're in the presence of the Lord, you don't just see him, but if you start seeing him accurately, you start to see yourself. There should never be a time when you're in the presence of Jesus. It, 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 what worship is, Worship, in, in uh, Corinthians, it talks about worship being a mirror, a mirror. As we go from glory to glory, we are to be like him. We are being transformed. Worship's not just to sing song. As you worship, you're being changed. See, you, you, think, you think worship is a warm-up. No, it ain't. It ain't just a, a pre-thing before you hear the word. It's necessary because as you look upon his face, Psalm says, we become like what we behold. And that's why I feel like the Lord wants us to pause because a lot of us are beholding things that aren't him. So therefore, we're being transformed into the likeness of something that's not Jesus. So I, I want us to take 60 seconds and really put that thing on our minds. And I want the Lord, let the Lord to deal with you. Just for these next few months, I just feel the power of Jesus in this room. 
And I feel like as we open up our hearts to another level and become more vulnerable, he's going to deal with us. So go ahead and even if you need to lift your hands, if you need to get on your knees, just posture yourself in this moment. Come on. Father, we invite you. We invite you. Look at our hearts. Search our hearts. Woo. We invite you.